Welcome to the Prepping Report. This week in Medora, Australia, I hope I pronounced that right, police are urging residents not to trust their iPhone apps. Um, seems like a lot of people get smartphones here uh, lately, and whether you got Verizon or you use a Droid or whether you use the iPhone, um, they all have apps to help you get directions to go places, um, sort of taking the market from the Garmin's and the other GPS's that we seen in cars. Well, in Australia, there seems to be a problem with the iPhone app and the maps, and people are getting turned around into a state national park and being stranded in this park for up to 24 hours. Uh, most of these people had to walk. Um, for some reason, their vehicles either ran out of gas or become disabled. Most of these people had to walk for some distance to be able to get cell phone service and uh, temperature at this time is 114.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, most of these people didn't carry water, they didn't have nothing in their vehicle to help them um, get back to safety. Um, so this week in the prepping report, never trust your GPS. Always when you travel, um, have a map handy. Um, you never know when your GPS is going to get you turned around. Uh, prior to me working as a police officer, I worked with the Sheriff's Department here in Tennessee and countless times I went around the country driving to pick up prisoners from other locations. You know, they always gave us a nice GPS and we put the address in, but countless times, major, um, mainly in major cities, I got turned around and uh, had to stop and ask for directions even though the GPS was telling me where to go. Uh, with that in mind, uh, we're going to go through here. I'm going to switch the camera around and we're going to go through two bags that I have uh, that I keep in my vehicle at all times. These are not bug out bags. I'll explain that again uh, in the other videos. These bags are just in case something bad happens while you're on the road. Um, you have the ability to facilitate to come, somebody to come get you for rescue. So it could be for a wreck in the road and you're stuck in traffic or you could be, I had a friend of mine a couple of years ago was traveling along the interstate, wasn't watching the weather and got snowed in. Roads were impassable, they couldn't get nowhere to stay. Uh, he literally was in his car for about 36 hours until the traffic got moving again. Um, it's not a bug out situation but it is a place where you need to be prepared. Okay, here's the car kit. Uh, the black bag on the bottom is a 511 range bag. This green bag on top is a original special operations equipment vehicle med bag. Now remember that these two things are not bug out bags. These are to be kept in your car. Um, if you get stranded somewhere like the people in Australia did, you're driving down the interstate, a huge wreck, there's a long wait in line. There can be a million reasons why you're stranded in your car. If you know that you're going to be rescued or you know somebody's coming to help you, there's no reason to bug out. There's no reason to get your bug out bags out. So this is just a, the setup that I use in my car in case we get stranded somewhere unexpectedly. Um, if you wait just one second, we'll go through the contents of the kit. All right, now if you look at the real special operations equipment bag on the outside, I have a set of EMT shears and two tourniquets. On the inside once you open it up it's got everything that you need if you come up on a car wreck or uh, or somebody gets hurt while you're stranded somewhere and you have major bleeding you got a major trauma this bag right here will cover everything that you need to uh, stop the bleeding get the person back to breathing and uh, all your medical necessities this is not a boo-boo kit um, as we go through the black bag here in a second, uh, we'll see what we do for uh, minor injuries. This is mainly if you come up on a, like I said, a car wreck, or if you're stranded somewhere and you do get uh, severely injured, this is the kit that you want to grab. You don't want to be going through your bag and finding band-aids. You want to have something readily available. That's why I keep it at the top of my black bag, so uh, you can grab the trauma kit when you need it. Now I've got the bag all emptied out. I've emptied out everything but the water. And the bottom of the bag is lined with, with bottles of water. I also keep uh, water stored in, the, in my car at just various locations where it's convenient. You can never have too much water on you at all times. Now if you go to the food, 
uh, lots of different cases of tuna, something quick and easy to quick and easy to eat. Nothing that requires heating or cooking of any time. So if you're stuck in your car, you can pull out one of these. I've got some forks over here with some crackers. Um, have you some tuna? Uh, my kids love these Cliff Z Bar packs, organic bars. I've got about eight or nine of those. Just how many I can stuff in there. I've also got some Matt Rex Big Colossal bars and a huge jar of uh, crunchy peanut butter. This right here will get you if you know you got rescue from. There's no reason to get into your bug out bags. You can use this food. Uh, right there that will sustain you for quite some time. Now on the medical, notice I had a, a trauma kit. Inside my black bag I carry just a venture medical kit. It's just a first aid kit. It has all the basic stuff that you need um, for boo-boos. And uh, take care of your kids if something happens. I also carry some pocket tissues. For the entertainment side, it's kind of hard to pack everything you need. I've got a deck of cards. Also got two pads with some pens so kids can write and draw and do whatever they need. It is winter time, so I carry three, three blankets. People want uh, cover up. You know, when it gets summer, I may take out a couple of blankets and fill my uh, bag up with some more water because the blankets probably won't be needed. I also got a hat here with some. Uh, Skull caps in there. This hat also does light up. I do also carry uh, ammunition, both me and my wife. We shoot ARs, we also shoot Glock 19s. So I've got some extra mags just in case. Three flashlights, three ponchos. You can never be without toilet paper in any survival situation. You've got to have it. The TP. Just got a roll of toilet paper here, crushed down. And finally, for signaling, if you know somebody's going to come, I've got an orange marker here. You can tie on to your car somewhere, let people know you're in trouble. For nighttime, if you hear somebody coming, just a simple basic strobe, let people know where you're at.